Hello, I'm here with uh, Dan Morris, consultant ophthalmologist specialising in ocular plastics. And he's going to tell us about a fellowship that he did uh, abroad and at home uh, about seven years ago. So thank you for letting us interview you today. Thank you, Amy. Pleasure. So can you give us a summary of what you did for your fellowship? Yeah, so I was training in Newcastle, did my registrar job in Newcastle. Um, did an ASTO in oculoplastics there with some orbital surgery and then decided to go to Vancouver to do my uh, main oculoplastic and orbital fellowship. Okay, and so why did you choose to go away? Uh, I, the, I took advice from all my uh, mentors at the time and it was felt that at that stage Vancouver was one of the best fellowships in the world. Why was it known as the best uh, fellowship in the world? So the uh, the Vancouver Eye Care Centre is uh, well known throughout the world and Jack Rootman who was the sort of godfather of orbital surgery internationally uh, was working there when I was there, just slowly retiring. So I did my fellowship with Peter Dolman who's uh, also a world renowned oculoplastic and orbital surgeon. Uh, the fellowship itself uh, was fantastic because you weren't, you, there was no service commitment um, which unfortunately meant it was unfunded mm -hmm. so I had no funding at all for the year uh, but it did mean that you were essentially shadowing Peter Dolman the whole time so there was no, you didn't have to do eye casualty on call. And how did you set it up? Um, so it's very important when you're trying to plan a fellowship is to plan way ahead so I, I applied um, three, four years ahead um, to go to Vancouver and uh, there wasn't a formal application process which there is for most fellowships uh, it was just a matter of emailing Peter Dolman and then emailing him again and again and again till he responded um, and then also meeting him so I had an introduction through one of my mentors um, at a meeting in the UK so I met him spoke to him um, I think it's important if you can't get hold of the person you want to go and work with go and actually visit them um, it's worth the effort. Uh, it's very important you get on with your fellowship supervisor. If you don't get on, um, that's going to make life very difficult. You're not going to learn. Um, if there is a competitive application, then ask your current mentors to recommend you, write references and so on. Once he'd accepted me onto his fellowship, um, that was approximately two years before I went, um, there was a lot of paperwork to do. So I had to apply for uh, to be a member of the Canadian Medical Association, the local physicians of British Columbia. I had to have a medical myself um, to make sure I was fit to go, as did my family. Um, we had to register for the, the equivalent of national insurance in Canada. So and what was your day-to-day -day, uh, work life like? Um, so uh, we operated every day apart from Tuesday. Tuesday was clinic all day, but he'd buy us a nice lunch in the middle of the day and then it was winter we went uh, skiing after work on a Tuesday uh, night skiing uh, which ended up with a beer and a pie at the mm -hmm. end of the at the end of the skiing session so that so that made up for the fact you were in clinic all day the other days we'd operate for half the day or all the day and then do a little bit of clinic in between um, he does a wide range of oculoplastic orbital pediatric procedures uh, so and he'd bunch them together so Thursday for example would be um, local anaesthetic lids um, and we do perhaps 10 or 12 bilateral ptosis blepharoplasty operations um, and then on a Wednesday we'd go up to the university hospital and do 10 or 12 endonasal DCRs um, so it was a, a, a vast quantity of surgery um, and then he also did a lot of cancer reconstruction post pose reconstructions and then usually one day of orbital surgery a week as well and that could be anything from removing tumours to orbital decompressions and so on as well so it was the it was a hugely uh, useful experience uh, going to Vancouver and doing that much surgery and it changed the way I operate it changed the speed at which I operate it was much slicker and quicker when I came back the choreography of surgery and organising it from the patient coming in to, through the operating suite to leaving um, was much slicker by the time I'd finished. Were there any downsides about going abroad? Um, it's expensive. Uh, it was the, the trip, the fellowship was unfunded. Um, we had two kids at the time so we all went out. Um, Vancouver's a fantastic place to go um, and live for a year but it's not a cheap city. Um, I was lucky to win the Keeler scholarship that year so that paid probably for about half of it. 
um, and the rest was uh, loans which I've only just finished paying off. Um, but I have to say it would, I wouldn't do it any differently now. Yeah, towards the end of Vancouver, um, I did a fellow swap with a fellow in Los Angeles. Um, so that he was this fellow wanted to come up and learn the non-endoscopic endonasal DCR, that, and I went down and worked with his boss, who was in Santa Monica and Beverly Hills. Um, so I learned a bit about proper American aesthetic mm -hmm. surgery. Um, which was a real life and I thoroughly enjoyed and I'd stayed in Santa Monica for a month which was fantastic um, so that gave me a little aesthetic edge um, and then I spent a bit of time in Kenya on the way back doing some eyelid surgery on the Samburu tribe and then came straight back into the consultant job here. Okay. Would you have any advice for trainees uh, doing an ocular or wanting to do an oculoplastic fellowship or a fellowship in general? Yeah, I mean, I think it's really important to think about where you want to go, both yourself and your family, if you've got a partner, kids, whatever else. Think ahead. If you're trying to plan it six months before, you're probably too late, certainly to get the good fellowships. Um, think about how you're going to fund it. It is important. It's going to be much more expensive than your usual job. Um, and then the admin side of it getting yourself organised and sorted is really important because you don't want to get there and find you haven't got a visa. And any advice for uh, people wanting to do an oculoplastics fellowship in the UK? Um, in the UK the, I would have a look at the BOPS website, the British Oculoplastics Surgical Society website, a list of all the fellowships is there. Um, Moorfields do several fellowships um, which is definitely worth looking at um, and they see a huge amount of pathology there. Um, and then we have a fellowship here, um, which is great to see a huge amount of pathology and also maintain a cataract list. Um, and there are fellowships all over the UK, lots of good people offering fellowships now. Um, so the, again, the key is to meet the supervisor, make sure you get on with them, um, and then have a think about where you want to go with your career, whether you want to do predominantly ocular plastic or whether you want lacrimal, orbital included as well. Okay, great. Well, thank you for letting us interview you today. My pleasure.